Hi, I'm going to give you a short introduction to using some third-party tools with Sequencer 5.0 to accomplish next-gen sequence alignment. I'm going to launch Sequencer 5.0. And if you're familiar with Sequencer, uh, one of the things you might be used to doing is loading all of your fragments into this, the project window. We're going to start with a reference sequence, and I've set one up as a template a uh, variant of Mycoplasma genitalium, a fairly small bacterial, the smallest stuff, free-living bacterial genome, I think. And instead of loading hundreds of thousands, in this case, or millions of reads into the Sequencer project window to scroll through, I'm going to tell Sequencer where to find the next-gen data to align to this reference sequence. Now, this reference is just, uh, you know, right out of GenBank, you know, with, with all of its annotations. So, has all the uh, features marked that you would expect. And I take that and I'm going to say align data files to reference using, in this case, I'm going to use GSNAP, a uh, program developed by Tom Wu and, and uh, collaborators at Genentech. Now we can choose to use either single read or paired end reads. I'll use paired end reads in this case. So, take one set, and I'll select my second set. Uh, if you're familiar with the issues uh, regarding quality scores, you can choose a Sanger Standard or Illumina quality scores. Uh, I'm not going to do any of the additional analysis, such as a SNP tolerant alignment from a table of known SNPs or uh, looking for methylation points based on bisulfite treated DNA, but I am going to open this automatically with another program called Tablet, which we'll get to in a minute. As like I say, this is a small genome. I'm using it just to make the uh, video quicker for you guys. And I automatically open Tablet. Now, just so you know what's happening in the background, Sequencer built a contig they're familiar with, but that contig only has two sequences in it, the reference sequence and the consensus of the contig built with the next-gen tools. So you can do all the things that you're used to with Sequencer, building variance tables, uh, doing restriction maps, all, all the normal analysis right in the Sequencer window, but uh, you also have these new tools that we're going to continue to add to. So this all went into one big contig, and this uh, looks something you're familiar with. This is the kind of stacked view of all the sequences lined up from upper left to lower right. And you'll see that as I pick individual sequences, it will show me where the mated pair is. These are all short, uh, short reads. I can zoom in just by double-clicking. and I can go from one sequence and say, you know, j jump to the, the, to the next one. Lots of useful tools here. I'm gonna, I can zoom in by double-clicking, or I can use this zoom bar up here. There are some different views. Packed view. Again, same sort of thing. And I can even do packed view with my paired ends lined up. So you can see the red line where the sequence finds its mated pair, either to the left or in this case to the right. In this case, here's one where the mate was not even mapped. Can I go back to the packed view for a moment? Uh, Tablet was developed uh, in David Marshall's group at the Scottish Crop Research Institute, particularly uh, Ian Milne and uh, some collaborators there. They have a wonderful piece of user interface design for looking at variants. I call this the sunset in Manhattan view, because as I adjust this variant, the sun goes down and the windows light up, where you will see variants from the reference sequence. Now, these, this scattering might be individual sequencing errors, but as you scroll along, it dramatically highlights the SNPs, or the, clear, the significant variance from your reference sequence. If I double-click in here and zoom in, and see in this, at this position, you can see that there's a T in most of uh, the isolate that I'm testing, uh, where there's a C in my reference sequence. I wish I designed this uh, here at Gene Codes. This is all the work of David Marshall's group. 
there are a lot of nice things in all of these tools. Uh, you know, for instance, I can change what my coloring format is, my, in this case, forward reverse reads, the read type. So you can see the mated pairs, the red ones show where something isn't mapped. And I encourage you to uh, go to the tablet website and the, and, uh, the GSNAP website at Genentech and learn more about these things. Some wonderful tools, and this is just the start of features that will be added to Sequencer from the rest of the scientific community.